Hello everyone, uh, it's Ben, or uh, Vertigo, as you may know me. Hope you're doing well. Um, we're doing another flight here uh, in the sim. Uh, we're on the ground at San Jose. Uh, a bit of a different airport, I don't think you guys have seen it before. And we're headed down uh, further south in California to Burbank. Flying the old Alaska livery. Now this is uh, generally a uh, Alaska regional subsidiary flight, but we're flying with Alaska themselves. Um, and we're using the old livery. This was at never on the 737-800, which is what we're flying. This was always on the uh, the 200, but I like the look. I like the retro livery, so we're going to fly it on the 800. Obviously, it's fictional. Um, going up to flight level 310 here on the ground at gate 21 at uh, San Jose. We'll be arriving at gate Alpha 3 at Burbank. Uh, we are flying on VATSIM, and currently there's no control here at San Jose. Uh, there was Los Angeles Center online, but he p appears to have gone offline, so for the time being we'll be uncontrolled, unless somebody decides to get on. Um, I think that kind of covers the core of it. Uh, ultra weather's providing the visual effects. It's it's dusk, so you know, the sun will be setting and we'll be landing at night time. Um, and uh, FSGRW is providing like the weather injection, the weather data. I hope that covers most of it. If you guys have questions, feel free to ask. But uh, without any further ado, we'll hop in the flight deck and get started. All right, guys, welcome in the flight deck. Um, the uh, battery emergency exit lights, standby power, all taken care of and armed. Ground power is connected. Uh, the logo light and nav light are on. The IRSs are in the process of aligning. And as you can hear, the plane is being boarded. Um, right, so we can just quickly hop up to the overhead. We can throw on the window heat at this point and we can set the pressurization panel altitude to 31,000 feet flight level 310 um, no control so squawk 2200 works and a uh, on unicom in the uh, primary frequency 122.8 is fine so let's hop into the uh, CDU we're at San Jose can align the IRS with the GPS position and we're going from San Jose to Burbank. Runway for departure is 30 right. Flight number is Alaska 3442. And our routing, uh, we're on the Techie 2 departure, I believe. Techie 3 departure to eBay. eBay Direct Burglar. Burglar to Honsk. H O N Z K. Then we join the arrival. So departures Techie 3 eBay. Arrival is. Let's see if I can find it here. Uh, 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 Rocker 2, uh, Honsk. And we'll be, I'm assuming, the ILS 8 Zulu uh, with the Mikey transition. And we should have a good flight plan here. There's just a few things we will uh, need to adjust. So I have a look here. And they're on the arrival specifically. Silex, we should be at 3,700 feet. And uh, at Bud, we should be at 3,000 feet. Right, so we got a good flight plan. Uh, zero fuel weight will autofill. Our reserve fuel is, let's have a look, uh, 4.3. Cost index of, let's go 38. And flight level is 310. Uh, OAT should autofill 22, that's correct. And we have a selected OAT of 47 with a 22k D rate and flaps 1. CG autofills, which gives us our trim of 5 or 4.54 4 and our v-speeds will autofill as well and there's the CDU uh, good to go let's go ahead and fire up the APU and as the uh, APU comes alive we can uh, cease the boarding procedure throw in the passenger signs at this point as well And we can set the MCP, so let's get the flight directors on. And uh, V2 is 145. Initial heading off the runway, I believe, is 306. 
Let's have a look. Uh, 305. Initial altitude is uh, 190, 19,000 feet. All right, great. We got speed, we got heading, we got altitude. The flight directors and VOR bugs are taken care of, and all we need to do is set the altimeter, which I believe is uh, 3004. And we'll set that on the standby as well. And the right hand side since these are not synced up. Right, good to go. APU's up and running. Transfer power onto the APU generators. And we can throw in the APU bleed. Whoops, not the engine bleed, the APU bleed. Cool. So in the meantime we'll wait for the IRSs to finish aligning and then once those are good to go, uh bring you on back and we can go ahead and prepare for push and start. <laughs> so literally right as I said that the IRSs came up and uh, we are now back and ready to go. Just pre-plan the pushback so I'm going to let them know that we're ready to go. Uh, tell them to go ahead and start our pushback for us. Great news Captain, your toe's coming. And we'll open up the rest of the fuel pumps, get the anti-collision light on, we can get rid of the packs. Isolation valve to uh, open. And this is for the transponder to auto since we'll be on a active movement area. We can get the panel lighting on since the sun's starting to set here. Whoops, try that again. There we are. Okay, and we're ready to push back and start our engines here uh, when the uh, ground crew's ready to go. Alright, looks like the doors and hatches are closed and we're ready to connect. So I will say uh, terrain radar, I have that installed and it could be relevant, uh, given that we're kind of flying in Northern California and Southern California where they have some mountains and so forth. Um, at any rate, uh, I tried it, <laughs> I tried recording this uh, whole bit earlier, which is, if I'm rushing through it a bit, this is why, and the sim crashed on takeoff. And uh, this has happened once before, I don't know what the cause is, if it's the train radar, if it's uh, something else entirely different, but unfortunately the crash log isn't giving me any useful information, so it's hard to tell what's what. Uh, so at any rate, what I'm getting to is I'm going to leave it off for this particular flight. Welcome aboard, Captain. Toast connected, bypass pens inserted. Go ahead and kill the parking brake when you're ready to go. Alright, we'll release the parking brakes for the Here comes crew. the pushback. Light them up. And we'll start engine number two. We'll look for about uh, 20 to 25 N2, and then we'll feed in fuel. Alright, fuel into engine number two. Listen for a good start on that, the starter cutout. There it is, and we'll start engine number one. So yeah, I apologize if I seem a little distracted or rushed. It is that the sim just crashed, and so I'm trying to uh, kind of distracted with what that could have been and trying not to, or, or I guess a better way to put it feed and fuel here is walking on eggshells being careful about what switches I am and uh, am not touching and, and uh, what features I am and am not turning on and off uh, because I don't want that to happen again it's kind of when you're recording and you have a lot of forward momentum and feeling good about things and then that happens it's kind of a bummer so trying to get all that squared away there's a uh, goes the starter cutout, and we got a good start on uh, engine number one as well. Good starts on both engines. Power onto the engine generators, which means we no longer need the APU or the bleed. Just about done here. Go ahead and set your parking brake. 
Uh, AP bleed and gone. And we're disconnecting the tow. Give me just a moment. Engine bleeds are on. Packs are back to auto isolation valve to auto electric hydraulics probe heat. Throw in the yaw damper. Get the start switches to continuous. Like so. And we'll throw down the taxi light. Might blind the uh, <laughs> the tug down there, but that's fine. Auto throttle armed. Auto brake RTO flaps one for takeoff. Go ahead and uh, sit the trim. Uh, five point four five. We're just about there already. I'll just inch it back slightly. Transponder's already set and taken care of. We'll quickly check the flight controls. Make sure we have movement on them. We do. Flight controls look fine. And we're disconnected. Signal and pen on the left. Take it easy and have a safe flight. I think we're ready to do this. Um, yeah. Uh, we transferred power. And I'm just quickly glancing at my checklist. Yeah, we're ready to go. We're ready to get out of here and begin the taxi. So let's do this. Uh, let's release the parking brakes. We'll head out to runway 30 right. And uh, I'll see you guys once we get there. All right then, let's get out of here. Uh, we're just approaching runway 30 right. Transponder to TARA, we should have traffic on both the NDs. Uh, we'll go down full length here. Uh, we do have traffic on the left and right hand ND. Just waiting on the lights and the clock. Uh, and we'll be ready to go. So final appears to be clear. Nothing on uh, TCAS or TCAS or some people say the fish finder. See, obviously, planes. That's the purpose of it. <laughs> Strobe on. Lights on. Start the clock. Uh, I did arm VNAV and LNAV uh, on the taxi. Since this is an RNAV departure, we can arm those on the ground. Advance the throttles to 40%. They're stable and take off. We have N1, we have LNAV, VNAV, uh, armed, and TOGA. Airspeed's alive. There is 80 knots. We have thrust hold. D1, rotate. There's a positive rate, and we'll bring up the gear.
N1 LNAV VNAV speed. 1,000. 1,000 feet. Auto brake off. Gear off. Let me make sure that, that gear off position is a little tricky to get. There we go. And we'll need to start to make this right hand turn here shortly. I'll let the plane handle it. And we'll clean up some initial lights here. Uh, the turn offs and the nose gear light off. So the gear is up and off. The auto brake is off. Flaps are coming up now. Ooh, it's kind of losing its mind on this departure. Let's see how it handles it. It is a really tight right hand turn uh, to get out of here. We could even, maybe to help reduce this bank limit a bit, so it can really get into this turn. Right, so as I mentioned, the gear's up and off, the auto brakes uh, are off. The flaps are retracted. Um, we'll get the start switches here as we exit the turn and get the landing lights at 10,000 feet. So if you see there Spartans, we need to be 5,000 at Spartans, which is why it's leveling off at 5,000 feet. I'm going to go ahead and say, no, we don't. I'm going to bug our altitude up to 310, and I assume if there's ATC online, they'd give us a climb and maintain. So I'm going to go altitude intervene. This will clear any of those altitude restrictions we have on the climb out. And this will allow us to climb on up unrestricted to 310. And there we go. And just to clear that out to make things uh, a little simpler for the uh, yeah hold up Spartans yikes what have I done erase Spartans direct execute and there we go so now the plane should be happy just to go direct Spartans oh there is a plane on the uh, the fish finder he's a bit above us let's see if we can see him uh, it'd probably be hard to but we can have a look He's somewhere out, kind of that way. Probably in those clouds, I doubt he'd be easy to spot. Anyway, guys, uh, let's go ahead and clean up start switches. And we're on our way to uh, Burbank. Uh, enjoy the views, and I'll touch in uh, before we descend to let you know what the plan is. All right, welcome back in La Flight Deck, guys. Just going to check in on the descent real quick. So we're about 60-ish miles out. We can get a more uh, precise idea of that. 53 miles out from top of descent. 
So we'll just go through the regular procedures and steps to uh, get ourselves set up so you're familiar with what we're doing. Um, on the arrival, we're going down to Mikey, and we're going to hit Mikey at 7,000, and then our next altitude restriction after that is uh, one of uh, 3,700 at Silex. Uh, we're just going to set it for the 7,000 at Mikey for now, and then we'll uh, step ourselves down from there. Of course, if there's control online, uh, we'll rely on them. So 7,000 on the MCP altitude, that's good to go. Uh, we don't need to watch it. We do need to worry about the pressurization panel. What am I talking about? Um, landing altitude at Burbank. Airport elevation is uh, seven, uh, just about 800 feet. The airport elevation is 778. Touchdown zone elevation is 727. Um, so I'm going to set 778 airport. We'll round that up to uh, 800. There we go, 800 on the uh, pressurization pan panel for the landing altitude. ILS frequency and course. The uh, frequency for the ILS is uh, 109.5, so we'll punch that in. Try that again, 109.5, and we'll put that on both sides. And the inbound course, as we make this right-hand turn, is 079. And we'll put that on both sides. Now, the only thing to really check in on is the weather at Burbank. Let's make sure this is held relatively consistent. Wind is 160 at 8, so we will have a good bit of a crosswind if we choose to land on 8. I'll keep an eye on that. We may end up going runway 15, or I think it's 13, actually. Uh, we'll see how that plays out. But for now, we'll plan for runway 8 and then go from there. Right, so, uh, with 1.8, uh, um, what am I talking about? Runway 1.3, winds 1.60 at 8, uh, planning runway 8, uh, that, is, that is the plan. So we have the uh, frequency and course in for runway 8, that may change, uh, and if it does, it would be strictly a visual, because there's no instrument approach procedures for any other runway there, as far as I know, I can quickly check the charts. Uh, yeah, they got nothing. They have the four stacks visual for runway 15. I'll take a look at that chart and uh, see if that's something we could do, but for the time being, we're going to plan for eight. Now, runway eight is uh, just under 6,000 feet. That's pretty darn short. Um, we could use an auto break of two, but if we floated it, that might get dicey. Um, but with full reversers, that'll do us good. I'm going to let's go with auto break two, and if I'm feeling uh, a little anxious, <laughs> we'll go with an auto break of three. The minimums for the ILS Zulu are 1,007 uh, feet, so we need to have the runway in sight by, there, by then, so we'll set that on the uh, barometric minimums, 1,007. Take also a little while to wind up there, there we go, 1,000, got pretty darn close, 1,007. And I don't believe there's any weather that would give us issues here, no, clear skies, 10 statute miles of is, we're great. Um, Cool, so minimums are set, and we'll just set our uh, landing VREF page real quick here. So we got, uh, let's have a look. Uh, 7.9, we'll lose another 1,000 pounds by Burbank, so we'll call this 127.7. Flaps, invalid entry. Oh, yeah, that's why. 127.7. Flaps 30, landing speed of 140 knots. Good, that's good to go. And we can just step through the approach here. This is something that needs to be done because I'm not terribly familiar with it either. Let me get a little bit of flood lighting on in here. So we'll go to plan mode. We'll zoom on in. We'll go to the legs page and we'll step on through the, uh, the arrival. So you 2 to Trav, to Rocker, to Zeppi, Ivans, Mikey, Silex. Okay, so basically it already puts us on the, uh, by default, puts us on the, uh, the approach. So we would generally go with the, with the transition, that is, specifically. We'd go to what? Um, Mikey, and then uh, go from there. So you can see this takes us down to Mikey, and then it just flies us in on the, uh, the approach for runway 8. I'm taking a look at the four stacks visual right now. Let's just actually talk through that while... Uh, while I'm recording this, so 
as we're how far out from top of descent? 13 miles? I'm going to put on the passenger sign since we're, we're getting close. Mm -hmm. So, if we were to shoot the four stokes visual, um, clearance, so the chart reads, when visual approaches to runway 15 are in progress, clearances will be given to aircraft from the northwest through northeast, utilizing the following phraseology, uh, Alaska 32, whatever our call sign is, 3442, cleared for four stokes visual approach to runway 15. You come in at 5,000 to the left of Mount Oak. You fly a 080 heading, uh, kind of track right of the San Gabriel Mountains. And then you make your turn to final at or above 3,000. Um, and the, let's see, there's Van Nuys, and then the visual reference would be the four stacks. It looks like some kind of factory. Need to be uh, at or above uh, 1180 there. The problem is, in the dead of night, I don't think we could shoot this. I don't know the procedures, to be honest. Uh, weather minimums, 5,500 foot ceiling and five miles of visibility. We have those minimums, but uh, the issue would be you can't see the mountains at night. And um, the, uh, this four stacks uh, facility, whatever this is, probably also couldn't see that at night unless it's very well lit and even if it was uh, you're unfamiliar with the area which I am uh, and you don't know what you're looking for and it's the dead of night that would be doable during the day but at night might not be I'm gonna talk to somebody who controls in Los Angeles and get a feel for that and see if this is something you can shoot uh, at nighttime uh, we're not gonna do it during this flight of course but um, in the future perhaps for the time being, though, we'll be on runway 8, and then this is something to look forward to in the future, either daytime, nighttime, depending on, you know, when it's available. At any rate, that, yeah, that's kind of the approach. Uh, we've gone through it, the arrival and the approach, so I'll see you guys as we're getting ready to land. All right, guys, uh, welcome back in. So we're just about to land here. We're, what, about five miles from Silux, which is where we joined the uh, the approach. You can see the glide slope's alive. The localizer has been picked up as well. So we're going to uh, arm uh, approach here shortly so that we can capture those. And I'm actually going to intervene on the speed, and we'll take it down to 2, uh, let's go 230 for now. We're about 20 miles out from the runway, it appears, uh, give or take. So we'll take the speed down to 2.30. We are full spoiler to try and keep the speed down. It was getting away from us a bit. And you can see just this beautiful night lighting. There's the 1,000 to go for 3,700. Now, the missed approach altitude is a climb to 1,300, then a climbing right turn to 4,600 uh, to the Ventura VOR. So 13, uh, then a right turn to the uh, Ventura VOR. Or sorry, the Ventura uh, 086 radial. I gotcha. 
So yeah, we would proceed to Ventura. So what we'll do is we'll level off here at 3,700 feet. I'm gonna put the spoiler away since uh, we don't need it much. The engine should uh, throttle back. And we'll punch approach. We'll get the localizer. We're a little bit late getting it there, but the plane will self-correct. And I believe you can see the uh, the airport out there. There's Burbank, and then immediately underneath us here, this is another airport. This is Van Nuys that we're right underneath. We're going to just back it off to 210 on the speed, and we'll take flops 1. Uh, the engine start switches are set continuous. We have flaps one out, the landing lights are on under 10,000 feet, and the altimeter set to the local setting at Bur Burbank 2991. Second, we have this glide slope. We'll set the missed approach altitude. Alright, there it is. So, Mr. Roach altitude 4,600 feet is set. And we'll back off the speed to 180. And we might need a uh, bit more... Let's drop the gear to get a little bit of... A uh, little bit of drag. We're on the spoilers. There's the radio altimeter. And we'll take flops 5. Runway's in sight. Radio altimeter's alive. Rest of the light's coming on. So we're just standing by and landing speed, landing flaps. And our landing speed is uh, 140, and then we'll correct for the wind uh, and put that about 145-ish. Coming in a little bit hot here. Let's see if we can't get flaps 15 down. And you can see we have a 9-knot crosswind off the uh, right-hand side of the plane. Just gonna quickly peek a wing view. Looks gorgeous. And the other side. There we go. All right, let's take flaps 30. And we're fully configured just above a thousand feet. We're good to go. Whoops. Thousand feet stabilized, Mr. Burke. <laughs> it's trying to uh, reset the uh, the VC view there. All right, let's do this. So my microphone cord got tangled. Just my seat, and this will be like my first true crosswind landing in X-plane. So wish me luck. Auto throttle and the autopilot out. I have control. Four hundred. Three hundred. Minimums. Light slow. Two hundred. Light slow. It's fine, Light we're slow. visual. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. Oh my goodness. I guess I needed more power there. I just dropped like a rock. Goodness. Yikes. <laughs> Alright, where are we? We'll be taxiing for the next few minutes, so please remain seated with your seatbelts fastened. And all items stowed until the seatbelt sign is turned off. See where please we are on the sure ground you have here. Have all your personal belongings before you exit the aircraft, and be careful when opening the overhead compartment. You're now free to use.
so we're device. off at uh, runway eight at Burbank. Burbank. Let me pull up the uh, taxi chart. Yeah, they're going to be checking the main gear of this aircraft. That was a complete and utter disaster. <laughs> I, uh, I I felt like the approach was very stable and controlled, and then it just as we're approaching the runway there, it just. Uh, I guess I needed to get into more of a flare. I was expecting some ground effect, and there was there was no ground effect at all. There wasn't that kind of okay, 50, 100 feet above, and you start to get the uh, the ground effect where the uh, the plane kind of begins to uh, float just due to those physical forces working on it. It just kept going down like a rock, and I tried to get a bit of a flare, but obviously at that point it was too late. And I was on the power. I think our uh, our V speed was smack dab on 145, so it wasn't a power issue. Um, not sure what to say about that one, but obviously it wasn't good. So, um, yeah, try try to play sort of nice in the comments, but we'll we'll work on that. Uh, we'll have to need to figure out where we're taxiing to now as well. Um, I guess it's going to be about getting into a flare a bit earlier and just kind of a gentle flare at 50, 100 feet ish kind of easing back on the elevator and then you enter kind of a, a more aggressive flare at 20 to 30 feet and cut the power at that point as well. Um, yeah, we got to work on that. Anyway, I'll get the aircraft cleaned up and figure out where we're taxiing to. I'm not quite sure where we are, so I'll figure out uh, where we're going, get there, and I will see you guys at the gate. I hope you enjoyed the flight. Yeah, I uh, apparently need more time to learn how to land an X-plane. The funny thing is, my first landing was pretty firm, and then I had like three landings after that um, that were really nice. I was like, okay, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> and then my last several have been uh, firm, some of which reasonably firm, but that was a controlled crash. <laughs> I'll need to go look at what the VVS was when we touched down, but that was uh, probably in the range of 700 to 900 feet per minute, which is a controlled crash. I mean, you'd survive it, but uh, <laughs> you're going to get a talking to. So, um, yeah, I'll try and figure this out. Um, I was expecting more of a ground effect, which didn't occur. Um, it wasn't like abnormally low pressure. Um, or anything like that. I had throttles in, speed was good. I guess I just need to get into more of a flare. Um, but yeah, <laughs> putting that aside, it was a fun flight. I enjoyed it. I hope you guys did as well. Uh, as always, social media stuff is in the uh, description. If you have any requests, comments, critique, um, or suggestions even, especially for landings, please let me know. And uh, I think that kind of covers it. Uh, I'll wrap it up here, guys. I'll see you next time. So long.